Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the time that we have this morning, this new week, uh, to look again at Judges, and this time, uh, Judges chapter 9. We ask for your Holy Spirit to instruct us, and um, we pray, Lord, that you can bless each person who is searching. We know, Lord, that um, there's many things we do not understand, and we know that um, in the church, even in this movement, that that, that, um, that you have have a few who are interested in truth, but many who are not, and that's because truth reveals to us our sin. And so we ask, Lord, that you can show us who we are and our need of you, that we can depend upon you at all times. I pray for a blessing upon each person. May your angels watch over them. May your Holy Spirit speak to their hearts. May we reflect your character to all around. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again. So... Um, we had finished off uh, the story of Gideon, uh, at least as far as we, we could go. And uh, now we're going to look at taking uh, Abimelech and Jotham, and we have them placed on a line, of course. We have the way marks. But what we want to do is bring out uh, the verses and see anything that we have missed. In a sense, we can say that what we, we've been doing the last few months has been gleaning uh, from this story, noticing little details and, uh, and refining our understanding of these lines. Now, we have, um, prior to this camp meeting in July, uh, we got one, two, three, four, we only got seven weeks prior to the camp meeting starting. So I don't know if we're going to get through everything before then, and but we're going to try our best. So I'm going to try to move a little bit faster because not only do we have to get this done, but I have to get the notes done as well. Um, so when we looked at Abim Abimelech's cons uh, conspiracy, as it's called here in, in – uh, E sort in most of the Bibles. This is um, this line we don't have as a way mark on our lines. That is the line of the judges. We don't have Abimelech marked. We do have Jotham, Jotham and his parable. Um, so how do we take it that Abimelech's conspiracy is not marked as one of the judges? Um, so I'm just going to show you this here. I mean, why did we not put uh, Abimelech here in this line, the top line there? So why is he not a judge? And then how do we, how, how do we have a line for him? Is there an enemy? Yes, there's an internal enemy. Okay, it's an internal enemy, but it's not it's not a specific enemy that was that they're fighting against outside of them. Right? Now we can see even that some of these lines do have internal enemies, but there's always an external enemy as well. So so here we have uh, Abimelech representing something that we would call an ex an internal enemy now if we look at if we look at this line the line of the judges and we know that this is a parallel to millerite history is there an internal enemy in millerite history I would think yes. Okay. 
So we know in Millerite history, there are two groups being tested, the Protestants and the Millerites. Right. And we're saying that Jotham is spanning uh, that period of time that marks uh, Samuel Snow's letters or Samuel Snow, right? So it's, it's the line of Samuel Snow. So Jotham is there as representing Samuel Snow's letters. And we know that the work of the enemies, um, you know, at first, of course, there's the work of the enemies, the people who are opposing uh, that message. The group being tested is, is Protestants. Now, not all Protestants are accepting this message. Many are opposing of the message. But there comes a point where um, the opposition to the message is is from the churches that they had that first had accepted the message. Yeah. So Angela says the spirit of prophecy mentions those among SDAs who have had the truth but aren't sanctified by it. Um, which is, of course, you know, it's always the case that we have those that aren't sanctified by it. Now, we know that the church has initially accepted the Millerite message uh, because it, it filled their pews and, and their coffers, right? Right. So they weren't really particularly interested in it. Now, there's kind of a, a parallel, too, when it comes to Jeff's message. Jeff was, was welcomed into many churches, especially in uh, uh, Central America and places like that, uh, some of the Spanish-speaking countries, um, even though there was no real interest in his message per se. It was just that he was a draw, right? And right. that would be the same with William Miller. People like to have William Miller come and speak. You get a lot of interest. Um but you really didn't have to follow up on it. It wasn't really any cost to the church per se. And um, so, but there came a time, you know, especially as, as the time drew closer that these churches began to close the doors. Now we, we know that it's in the summer of, of 1842 that they begin to close the doors. The Millerites uh, begin having camp meetings. So prior to that, the Miller spoke in churches but they now start to have this more uh, evangelistic outreach, let's call it that, uh, where they go into these towns and they would sometimes have the tent, the great tent, um, and they would have meetings from there and it would cause quite an interest. And um, the Protestant churches, of course, weren't allowing them to speak. So, you know, there would be the odd church that would, but most weren't. So, so there is a kind of internal enemy there. Um, we don't see the Millerite movement itself turning on itself um, uh, that I know of, other than once you get into the later history after uh, when, you, when you have um, uh, the, the Midnight Cry. I mean, there are some differences that are arising regarding uh, some of the doctrines that are being introduced, such as the state of the dead, um, and and, and uh, not everyone's accepting the seventh month movement, though it seems like many many of them are. Um, and then also the call to come out of Babylon isn't isn't always uh, accepted by everyone, right? So there are some things that are being introduced. And, and for the first time, you're going to have the application of the three angels' messages and also Revelation 18. So, so there are some new things that happen in that seventh month movement that isn't accepted by everyone. And definitely once you get to the end, October 22, you're going to have uh, the vast majority of Adventists are, are not going to be accepting uh, the sanctuary message in the Sabbath. So, um, so when we look at, at this Jotham here, I mean, it, it's in response to something that would have, have to parallel Millerite history. And, and, and this is characterized by Abimelech. Now, Abimelech is technically the first king of Israel. 
though he's a self-proclaimed king and uh, he's not normally counted as one of the kings, but he is a king, right? That's his, he is made king. He's going to be crowned king or anointed king. And that's going to be in, um, uh, right, it, the place where they have uh, um, the Mount of Blessings and the Mount of Curses. So that's Shechem, right? Let's get those names mixed up. Also Saul, Sychar, or Sikkim. But anyway, um, so we're going to have that, that story of Abimelech being anointed king, and then the prophecy or the parable of Jotham. And so we've placed it as lines within our movement, what we call Abimelech's line and what we call um, Jotham's line. And Abimelech's line is going to, uh, well, what we have is Abimelech's downfall, and that's going to be from uh, November uh, 9th, 2019, uh, we're actually going to have it from November 15th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021. And so we haven't really marked all of this out as clearly as we could have in these diagrams. So, so we're going to have to do that. And um, we have Jotham's line and we have it as this period of seven years. So we take Jotham's line as this development of the understanding of prophetic chronology uh, that is going to be presented to this movement. It's basically, um, you know, it's in these seven way marks. And so there's these things that are unsealed or, or made clear as we move through this history. So we got what we call 2013. Of course, that's going to start a little bit before 2013. We have 2014, each of those years uh, representing all the way up to 2019, uh, this parable. And Jotham's line we characterize as 18720. So it's this July 1820 symbol. So we'll see how we address that. So it's just to refresh our mind as we start reading through this uh, to see if this fits with what we have drawn. Um, and Abimelech, the son of Jeroboam, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether is better for you, either that all the sons of Jeroboam, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also, that I am your bone and your flesh. So in the end of chapter eight, we had uh, this fact that there is these uh, 70 sons of Gideon. And, and then there's this one that's um, the son of, of Gideon's concubine. We also have uh, Jether there, which is gonna be the eldest of the 70 sons of Gideon that, that's addressed. So here in this history, we don't know particularly, uh, um, Stephen, do we know exactly the timing of this um, when this conspiracy occurs? Is it immediately after? Or how do we, how do we deal with that as far as time is concerned? Well, uh, I heard that it was 1260 BC. Okay. So if you go... Uh, consider the 300 years from when they dwelt in Heshbon on the Aror. Aror. Okay. Um, so that was uh, 1494 BC, so it was just a year before, or was in that, so maybe towards the end of that year, before the, um, and then the spring in the following year, they're going to cross the Jordan. So if you count 300 years from then, Okay. Gets you to the beginning of the six years of Jephthah. And okay. then you count back then um, before Jephthah, you had Tola, Jer, and then mm -hmm. three years. There, no, sorry, there was eight years of Ammon, 
from Palestine oppression. And okay. then you have the 45 years. And then you have these three years. Um, so the beginning, I have it beginning in 1260 BC. Okay. okay, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, so you're talking about the three years here. So he's going to reign over Israel for three years. Abimelech. Yes. So, so we're taking then that Abimelech, the three years, just follows from the death of Gideon. Yes, so Gideon, he begins in 1300 to 1260, the 40 years. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's what I was wondering how you, how you did that. And, um, you know, when we get to the camp meeting, I mean, we're going to try to make all of this chronology really clear so that when we're dealing with these lines, not only are we just, you know, dealing with them, each of them by themselves, but we have a clear understanding of this chronology of how to, to lay it out. Now, there's still uncertainties about some of this, but I think what Stephen's done is, at this point, the best that we can do, right? Even though there's some things that are uncertain, I think overall it it works. Um, now, so what would be the significance if this is happening in 1260 BC? Well, I think it hints of the, the 1260 years of the papacy. Okay. And and you so, king, yeah. You have like a king usurper. Right. Yeah, so the first up. time we have a king, it's 1260 BC. And and, and he's, he's in a sense a counterfeit. Can we say that? Yes. Okay. And then also we're going to have uh, this story of, of the parable that Jotham is going to give. And we know that that parable there relates to the 70, 70th week, so the 2520. And we know that the 1260 is part of the 2520, a counterfeit 2520, uh, which symbolizes uh, what I call the the, uh, the satanic uh, week, right? That is the 1260 for paganism, 1260 for papalism. So it's interesting that this is placed at 1260 BC as a symbol. Okay, so um, so we have uh, this illegitimate son who's now seeking to be king. So he's going to usurp the throne, and uh, then we have. Uh, so he has this conversation, right? So this is in Shechem. So he goes to Shechem, unto his mother's brethren. So this is his mother's side of the family, and what would that symbolize? So here we have a, a symbol for a church, right? It's also um, to the end of that 300 years. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, 66 years as well. So you can maybe have, see a symbol there. It's a 666. So it's 666 years before the end of the 300 years. No, no, 66. Yeah, 66 years before the, the end of the 300 years. Yeah. Okay. So, um, this is what I meant to say. But, um, so we have this, this he's going to go to his mother's side of his family. Um, and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father. Right. So this we got his mother's brethren. Right. So that's his mother's family. And 
So that's all the house of his mother's father, right? So just to make that clear. So, so we have his mother's father. So, so this would be his, his uh, maternal grandfather, right? Is that how we would say it nowadays? So speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it's better that either all the sons of Jeroboam, so they're going to refer to him here as Jeroboam, which are three score and ten persons reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And the mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem, all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said he is our brother. So, so who are these people? What is this talking about? I mean, obviously we have these characters and how are we making an application to our lines? So we're saying that this would be a message. And what is this message? Okay, so first, in order, let, let's try to figure out what this period of darkness is. So we have a time of the end, right? Obviously, in this line, we're going to have this line of, of um, Abimelech. And we know that um, when we were dealing with the death of Gideon, so we took this as a separate line. We have Gideon's ephod, and then we have the death of Gideon. And in the death of Gideon, they're going to address uh, Abimelech. Right. And we know that they're going to go uh, following Balaam. Right. So now this is an internal enemy. It's not it's not an enemy that comes and forces them to to be oppressed. They, they are now oppressing themselves. And so what is this oppression? What is Balaam? And also they made Baal Bareth, that is the Lord of the covenant or the covenant of Baal, their God. So they've made a covenant. And so what is this darkness? So they don't remember their deliverance from the hands of their enemies, right? They're not under the oppression of an enemy at this point. Gideon had delivered them. They're still delivered even uh, when Gideon has passed. Uh, no enemy has come in at this point, but they have an internal enemy, which is going to be an illegitimate son of, of Gideon or J or Baal. So what is this darkness in just the simplest terms?
I mean, it's Baal. It's Baal worship, and it's a covenant with Baal. So what is that darkness? What, what, how have we characterized this darkness and this message of, of Jotham? And that Abimelech is, he's promoting this darkness, this false message. So what is it? Well, we've got connected Baal, sun worship. Okay, well, we connect it to sun worship. Um, now, here in this context, we've addressed it as how we study God's word, right? That that's going to be um, really part of the issue is how we approach the study of God's word. Now, when we look at this line, we had, we had put the line of Jotham as these seven years, the 25, 20 days, uh, from December 21st, 2012 to November 15th, 2019. So there's this overlap of a week between Jotham's line and Abimelech's line that's not really uh, seen clearly. I didn't put a week in there, but we have that symbol there. So we have the seven years, and this represents the 70th week. So in this period of time in this movement, up to 2019, uh, we have this chronology that's, uh, that's going to be addressed. So this, this chronology that is the message of Jotham, Jotham's parable, covers this, this period of time time these seven years because he's the 70th week it's a period of 70 years or seven years and um there's lots we have to do to fill out these lines to make them uh clearer and then we have a bimlech's downfall so that's a period we're going to just say, say a bimlech's downfall really is the whole period of time that that he reigns those three years so um samuel's asking uh uh, what happened on November 15th, 2019? So on, on or about November 9th, Elder Jeff is saying that this period of probation, that we have this close of probation that happens, happens uh, seven days from November 9th. And so I'm just doing an inclusive count. So November 15th, 2019 is 25, 20 days from December 21st, 2020. Or 2012. So December 21st, 2012, which is that Mayan date, the 13th back tune being marked there. Um, it's going to be 25, 20 days to November 15th, 2019. So that's that's the end of that close of probation. Even though we mark November 9th as that date that uh, where probation closes for uh, the Omega movement. Jeff extends it one week, and that's a week counting November 9th. So that's just why I place that there. <clears throat> and we're going to look at all the dates here. What's that? What was uh, December 21st, 2012 again? What marks that again? So that's uh, 1,872,000 days from when the mind calendar begins on August 11th, 3113 BC, according to the Gregorian calendar. Okay. So that's, so that's uh, what's actually technically 3114 uh, BC, but um, so it's 3113. So the mind calendar starts, that's the year 0000. zero, 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 zero. There's five zeros. And December 21st, 2012, the world was supposed to end, right? Well, that's right. Yeah, I remember that. Is it turned over to the 13th, 13-0-0-0-0, right? And each, uh, so each uh, back tune, so 13 back tunes, each back tune is 144,000 days. And if you take 144,000 times 13, you get 1,872,000. So that's the symbol of July 18, 2020. Or 1872, right? So, um, and, and this is actually part of this 777 uh, chiasm. There's two periods of 777 days at the beginning, 
and then two periods of 777 days at the end. Um, so, so that's why we have that period of seven, seven years. Now that seven years is going to, you know, we have the December 21st, 2012, um, but we're, we're also going to have uh, a date, which is October 5th, 2012. And October 5th, 2012 is 77 days before December 21st, 2012. And on October 5th, 2012, I present line upon line. So the first meeting that I do at a camp meeting in this movement is going to be on October 5th. Right. And it's it's a camp meeting that we organized. It was just a weekend camp meeting. It was in Canada Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, so we had um, those meetings on that weekend. Um, and we had uh, invited uh, Jamal Sankey was one of the speakers. And so we just had a short meeting. I did uh, three presentations in, in the mornings. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and um, I presented line upon line. So my understanding of line upon line. Yeah, so we have that symbol there of uh, the 10th day of the fifth month. Right. Uh, uh, right, so October 5th. <clears throat> and... Um, so anyway, that's that's part of this line, though it's not shown here, but we're gonna we're gonna try to add these details in. So we've taken this position. We say that this parable of Jotham represents this week of Christ, represents this uh these seven uh years being marked, and then we have a Abimelech's downfall, a period of three years. Now, we're not saying that there's seven years in Jotham, because that doesn't occur as, as part of this line. Um, but we're going to have Abimelech's downfall, and that's going to be three years. Now, we have it marked in the 777 days. So from November 9th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021. And we have here marked um, these uh, dates, many of them which we already had marked. Um, but we're going to mark them in... Uh, we, we have a reason why we mark them that way, and we'll have to explain that. We have to explain the verses that we use, what actually happens in this story, which here we didn't on this chart. We, we drew it out, but we didn't give any explanation for it. And so we have to draw that out. <clears throat> now, um, and we have here, of course, that uh, Jotham's line is this, uh, again, we have it here, and you can see the October 5th and December 21st, 2012 dates. But what we need to know is what this darkness is, and we know that it has to do with how we study God's word. Now, in this movement, if this is an internal enemy, that means that there is an enemy that's introduced into this movement um, that is going to uh, be, that this line is a result of. Now, Particularly, I'm saying that it's Parminder's understanding of time setting. So in 2012, now this is going to be earlier in 2012, Parminder is going to introduce this time setting. Now we know when we look at the line of the judges that that was Deborah and Brack who were fighting against Sisera, right? And Sisera is going to represent Parminder's message. But we know. Uh, Parminder's message is going to um, be infecting this movement all through this history. That is, um, all this time that we are being given light on chronology, Parminder is trying to uh, undermine everything that is being done because he had set up in 2012 uh, this idea that there was going to be a Sunday law in 2014. And and he was saying this is the Sunday law, right? Now, Jeff uh, correctly marked this as fanaticism. And this is going to be like in March of, of 2012. 
that this is going on. And um, I believe it's uh, in March. Now I know I have uh, Tabo that moves in with me at that time. And, and Tabo's communicating with Prime Minister's group. It gets leaked out that there is this time setting going on, which Tabo would have known about, but didn't tell me about because he didn't want me involved in this special email group that they had. And this email group was connected with uh, uh, Terry Lambert. So Parminder was working with Terry Lambert and also a lot of people in Wales. Uh, many, of, uh, as far as I know, almost, uh, I'm pretty sure all of them left uh, this movement. Um, but they were doing this time setting and it got leaked out. The video was leaked. Um, which wasn't supposed to be leaked. There was also this guy, um, can't think of his name, who was not mentally well, who leaked it out on Facebook as well. So he was believing this. So there, it was definitely fanaticism. And it was a type of time setting that goes contrary to Ellen White's direct counsel. So all through this time, though, as you know, Parminder gets introduced back into this movement, right? So even though he's he's sort of labeled as a fanatic, he doesn't just step out. He he begins to work, because he's probably been working for a while, behind the scenes, building a following. And uh, Tabo is one of them. And uh, Tabo and uh, um, Parminder and... Um, Is it Marco? Uh, be are going to be ordained as elders, um, you know, by 2016. But so during this time, we have this Parminder's working his way back into the movement in this time in Joseph's line. So this is the darkness that's being fought against. What God gives in response to what Parminder is doing, I believe, is this understanding of chronology that's founded solidly upon the prophecies of the Old Testament and the New Testament, all these prophetic lines, the prophecies of Daniel, Leviticus 26. Now, Parminder is, is really presenting a counterfeit. So his time setting, um, because time does exist within the movement, but I don't believe if it wasn't for Parminder, I don't think we would have ever set any dates. So, so Parminder tries to to take over this movement with his agenda. And, and he's going to use time setting uh, to do that. So he believes in time setting. And, and he's going to hide all this. He's going to hide really, I mean, the fact that he is doing a study that he doesn't want people to know about. I, I think, you know, really, Jeff should have discounted Parminder right from there and never allowed him back into the movement because he's already shown that he's not open and honest, right? So to do something behind the scenes and to try to make it secret, this is not of God, right? We would all agree with that. Everything is done. Secret, secret chambers. Yeah, everything needs to be done in the open, right? We need to be as open as the day. Right? There is no... Uh, conspiracy or hidden hidden meetings. I mean, if if you look at at things done in secret, uh, the evangelical conferences in the 1950s with the Adventist Church, meeting with the evangelicals secretly. Right, these types of things should not happen within in the church, within this movement. You don't have secret meetings. Um, now, obviously, there are personal things counsel with. There are things that are private. But when it comes to the truth and to this movement and this message, everything needs to be open. And so Parminder wasn't open. So now when we look at this darkness, then, we know that this is the darkness of Baal. That is, it's a way of understanding the Bible that is really the apostate Protestantism method of understanding the Bible. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with how Protestants do time setting. So the Protestants have applications of the 2520. They have applications of 
of all of these different time prophecies. And they connect them to the present with the past. And sometimes they're just in the present. And we would, we would call it futurism or dispensationalism. And Parminder is using dispensationalism. He's mixing uh, truth with error, or he's mixing error. He knows the truth of this movement, but he's going to mix error with it. And that's going to seduce many people. Because there's truth there, uh, they're going to be persuaded. For instance, when they set the date for November 9th, 2019, um, the way that they do it makes no sense. There's, there's some truth there, but they're really not doing anything different than all of these different prophecies and time settings that I've seen the Protestants do. That is, they pick and choose, they're arbitrary, uh, they force things to fit, and uh, the fact that he chose a date that could be witnessed to by all of the things that had been unfolded in the study, the analysis of the prophetic periods, which was based upon understanding the 2520. If it wasn't for the 2520, we wouldn't have been able to have the correct chronology um, because the 2520, it was something that I could examine to see whether it fit the biblical chronology or not. And, and people always have these systems you know, some jubilee cycle or some kind of pattern. Just one guy has a 251-year cycle that repeats. But of course, he has to ignore reality to do so, right? That cycle doesn't exist. And so to me, it was important that we had an objective measure of chronology. And, and the question was, could we, did, was the 2520 representing that? And as we looked at it, as I looked at it specifically, I found that everything fell into place amazingly. So there's all these witnesses, just multiple witnesses, all the prophetic periods fall into these structures. Um, and so it wasn't something that was forced. Now, for somebody on the outside, they may not know that. That is, they may not recognize how things were unfolded. How things were unfolded is really the amazing aspect of this even up to the present when we, um, you know, back in 2022. So within a recent time, when we start to notice um, uh, the period of time that the manna falls and how that fits in with this whole structure of chronology. So there's things that we didn't even see that later on just fall into place. But back then in 2012, when I'm first starting to uh, put together the prophetic mirror, and, and that's the other thing I'm going to present on October 5th, that weekend. I'm going to be sharing what I understand about the prophetic mirror, but normally on napkins. That is, um, uh, it's not what I present at the meeting. I'm just showing it to individuals because it's at that time I come to understand this. Uh, and, and because of that, I'm actually going to be invited to uh, some Bible studies. So some people are there at those meetings. Um, they see me present this and they see the charts and they know there's this other group that's interested in the charts. So I'm invited to some Bible studies, which I present on the 2520. And that's where I'm going to meet uh, Heidi on December 25th, 2012. Um, yeah, 21, 2012. Yeah, I keep saying December 20. So it's on December 21, 2012. And then, uh, and then she's going to come over because we have a Christmas Day Bible study and then a New Year's Bible study. And then, uh, so we'll look at that in a little bit more detail, what, what that is all about. But th those periods of time, those dates, but they're prophetically significant. And so, um, and we can see then that each of these camp meetings that are going to occur 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, um, that they're going to bring out different lines, different evidences of, of chronology that are going to come to bear in 2018 when we have this empowerment of the second angel's message. That is, all this chronology comes together and it's going to uh, affirm this 2019 date. 
which is going to be the arrival of the third message. So I know it, this is a lot of things that we've looked at before, but here they come together in this specific line. Now we're saying that this lines up with Samuel Snow, Samuel Snow's messages. And so we, we know that Jotham's line at Samuel Snow represents uh, this movement. Um, so, so we have to understand how that is, how we fit that in. And this, so this, there's a lot of pieces here that have to be uh, put together. Now, um, so we have this death of Gideon. We can define what that darkness is. That darkness at the beginning of Jotham's line is this darkness of the, the, uh, the Protestant method of understanding prophecy, which is futurism. And we're really going to have a type of time setting that's no different than the Protestant time setting. And so God is going to give us a message that's going to counteract uh, what Parminder is doing. Now, um, now, the first step, of course, is going to be this understanding of line upon line. So this line upon line presentation in October 5th, 6th, and 7th in 2012 um, is extremely important for us in the context of understanding uh, our history. That is, we have to be able to put it upon a line. And we know that, that not everybody does that with these dates, with this chronology, but here we can. And we notice all kinds of things when we do so. <clears throat> now, um, there's going to be a lot of detail here. So we, we hardly have anything written on this chart, but we do have some other charts that relate to this. And then we have... Um, So is there anything else here? In, oh, we need to, you need to look at what I'm looking at, just the uh, chapter 8. So they go to Balaam. The children of Israel remember not the Lord their God who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Jeroboam, namely Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had shown unto Israel. So... We can see here at this point that there has been, since 9-11, these enemies that had, had come, and we look at them as external enemies, right? That is, we had all these enemies that were left, and they were left uh, to test God's people, to try them, that they're trials that they're going through. And... Um, so when we look at the judges line and we look at uh, all of these things that were before, this line of Jotham is actually, it's going to overlap a lot of that history. Because we had Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar, there's going to be these messages that bring us up uh, to um, the to time of Parminder, right? So it's going to bring us up to 2012, 2014. So that's the early history of this movement from 9-11 onward. But we know that 9-11 is 11-9. And so uh, this line of Jotham has to, uh, I got to explain this again, because I know that it's not well. well. We have it up here sort of on the board behind me. So when we look at this this whiteboard here, just uh, no, it's a bit of reflection there. All right. So we one of the problems that we had back in 2018, prior to um, so this is going to be at the camp meeting in Al in Alberta in uh, uh, the beginning of August. So it's going to be August. Uh, can't remember if it's August. It's going to end on August 11th. So August 6th to 11th, I believe. Something like that. Um, anyway, we're going to be at this camp meeting in Alberta, and Jeff is going to be there. 
and Jeff is presenting Samuel Snow's letters. Now, so Samuel Snow's letters were first presented in 2017, um, and Jeff knew that there was something there, but he didn't understand Samuel Snow's letters enough to present them until the summer um, of, of 2018. So he's going to begin presenting Samuel Snow's letters, this structure. And, but we have a problem. Now, part of the problem with Samuel Snow's letters is if we're going to take Samuel Snow's letters and we're going to place them in, in Millerite history um, and compare them to our history, so I'm going to have to figure out how to do this. So Samuel Snow's letters, you got here April 19th, right? And we know his letters are going to start February 16th, and it's going to end July 18th, right? So you're going to have um, this period of 153 days, and there's going to be 77 and 77 days. Uh, April 19th is not the center of this, so I'm going to do this differently. So we're going to put here, uh, this is going to be May 2nd. Okay. Now, with May 2nd, you're going to have um, April 19th over here. And you're going to also have April 3rd. Now, this is going to be Passover. And this is the false Passover. And then this is going to be Passover but it's the true, right? See that there? So this is what Jeff is interested in. He starts to understand that there is, there's something about these two Passovers and this April 19th that's in, in the middle of that and uh, this 153 days and and this, of course, is two months and 16 days. And this is also two months and 16 days. Right, and that's that symbol, the 216, which is February 16th. And, and so when this is presented in 2017, um, with this being about the prediction before midnight, so Tavo had made this the symbol of the prediction before midnight, which happened to be the center of the structure. So he didn't know about all of Samuel Snow's letters. There's more letters here. Um, but this last letter here is three days before midnight. Right? So this is, uh, uh, this is the fifth day of the fourth month. And this is the second day of the fourth month. Right? And so we have this uh, three days which is a symbol of the prediction before midnight. And so on September 23rd, uh, 2017, I'm gonna present this, July 18 is the symbol of the prediction before midnight. Right? Even though this whole structure is part of that prediction before midnight, obviously since three days is a symbol of the prediction before midnight, and July 18 is three days before, we have this July 18th date. Now, in 2017, we're not predicting a date of July 18th, you know, in any year or anything like that. We're simply interested in this structure in Millerite history and of the symbol of the prediction before midnight. Now, I know that July 18th, that this is a symbol of the 18th day of the seventh month, right? That is, that's how we would write it. If we're going to use that, that biblical example, it's generally written that way. And I know that there's 187 days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. So I also understand that symbol there as being connected to that 187 days. But I don't know that that's a date that we're going to proclaim, right? So, <clears throat> so anyway, this, this whole structure of Samuel Snow's letters, if April 19th is 9-11, then that means Samuel Snow's letters come after the empowerment 
of the first angel and before the arrival of the second. Now, so we just looked at it, our lines like this. And so I was asking Jeff, well, how do we address this problem if April 19th, because that's going to be the, the arrival of the second, we have 9-11 also as the empowerment of the first angel. I said, well, there must be some way in which this arrival of the second angel is, is, is different. That is, this has to go back prior to the arrival of the second angel, right? This is Samuel Snow's letters. April 19th is the second angel arrives. And yet we see that his letters precede that. And I said, does that happen in our history? So, so this is 9-11, the empowerment of the first angel. So over here, we're going to have August uh, 11, 1840. Right, so you have August 11th, 1840, over here, and so he's he's coming after the empowerment of the first angel, but before the arrival of the second. Now, if we understand that 9/11 is 11/9, we can see that this is true. Samuel Snow's letters come after the empowerment of the first angel, and before the arrival of the second. Right. So we have to we have to understand that there's that, that this arrival of the second. Deirdre, I'm sorry. Deirdre, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt, but yeah. um, down here where you got April and then April 19th, what's that first April? That's April 3rd. Pardon me. So April 3rd. That's the Passover that the Jews kept in 1844. Okay. May 2nd is the true Passover if April 19th is the first day of the first month. Right. So you got the Passover in April, the Passover in May. And April 19th is in the center of that. So, so then we have to say that the arrival of the second angel, because now we can recognize that this is 11-9, that when Jeff was making 9-11 the arrival of the second angel, he was actually creating another line. That is, these are the same way mark. Right? That is, in a sense, they're both 11.9 or 9.11. So, so this clarifies this. But in 2018, we have this problem because I said, well, Samuel Snow's letters aren't starting before 9.11. And so we have an empowerment of the first angel and arrival of the second. There must be two different way marks. Now, what was sort of buying for this at that point? Well, April 19th is the set is the second arrival, right? Right. Second angel arrives to the right history on April. Okay. okay. So so this and it goes and it goes for um eleven nine, right? Yeah. So if you this out day. with Millerite history, you know, this is April nineteenth. Right? That's the first day of the first month. Right? This is July twenty first. That's the the fifth, uh, yeah, the fifth day of the fourth month, right? This is the uh, first day of the fifth month. This is the tenth day of the seventh month, right? So we have those dates. Now, originally, Jeff put 9-11 here as the first day of the first month. But we can see that this is a Millerite history we can line this up with 11.9. So we have 11.9 because we have a separate line. And so we're saying that, that the story of Jotham is something that happens after 9.11 as the empowerment of the first angel, but that we really don't get the arrival of the second angel in this line until November 9th. <laughs> So November 9th is the first day of the first month. It's the first disappointment, right? Now we have multiple lines. That is, we can zoom into these different lines. And we're saying that Judges is a zoom into 9-11, right? Because this is still 9-11 as the empowerment of the second angel. But when we zoom into it, 
we now can have 9-11. And this is the history of the Sunday law. So this is this is a zoom in to this way mark up here, which Ellen White says is the Sunday law. This is Revelation 18. And so we're in that history since 9-11. Even in this history since 9-11 is the empowerment of the first angel, because that's what we first recognize it as. But it's also the arrival of the second angel. But it is, when we create this line, we're creating 11-9. So that's why we can take the story of Samuel Snow's letters. We can see that it exists in Millerite history, and so we can even have this line in our history as well. That is, we have this line of Jotham. This line is... The 70th week. This is what this movement is about presently. And, and all that our movement can bring us up to, chronologically speaking, is up to midnight. And we don't know if we can, I, I don't believe that we can set a date for that. But even then, this is just a zoom into the Sunday Law on Ellen White's line. So this doesn't exist on Ellen White's line, right? This is just simply the Sunday Law. This is, a, this is the Sunday law. Right? We, and, and technically, we would say that we're in the Sunday law history um, at 9-11, right? Because that's when the second angel arrives, and the second angel is the fourth angel. So even though we have this history, the repetition of the first angel, the first angel has to arrive before the second angel. And the second angel is the Sunday law. So technically speaking, this is not even the Sunday law history yet. It's not till we get to 9-11 that the Sunday law arrives. But when it arrives, because 9-11 is one event in history, we first recognize it as the empowerment of the first angel. And then we come to recognize it as the arrival of the second. And when we do that, we've actually entered into this line. Right? Because you can't really have two way marks as one date, right? You, you, there's, there's no way you can really do that. So once we have 11.9 and we've gone through this history, we can now recognize that 11.9 is just 9.11. That is, the second angel arrives at 9.11, but we zoom into it, it's this new line. And so, so we've gone through this before, but hopefully this is clearer to people in this context of why we can place Jotham. Sorry, I didn't uh, change the microphones there, so I don't know how well you heard me, but. So you can see what I'm talking about. We have this, uh, this line of Jotham. Sorry about that. We have this line of Jotham that has to fit into this structure. So that's Samuel Snow's letters. Okay, I'm just duplicating this slide and getting rid of this so that, so I'm not deleting this and just this here just hang on okay so we here we have uh, Jotham's line so we're gonna have to address this first and see how we can get this uh, to connect with these. Now, we're calling it Jotham's line, but it's actually going to address um, Abimelech as well. Um, that is, we're going to be reading this story of Abimelech and C. So we say that the time of the end is this period of darkness, and that's going to be uh, Judges 8. So that's going to start at... Um, 8.33. So Judges 8.33, uh, 8.34, and 
835. So I guess that's what we would place there then. Judges eight thirty three to thirty five. So, if we're going to characterize this darkness, what is this darkness? What, how we how are we just going to describe it? Baal Bareth, and that's going to be time setting. I think that's a good way of putting it. Okay. So we've got Baal Bareth and we've got time setting. Baal Bareth. Okay. Not so small. Sorry about this here, I'm just doing this. Okay, okay so we got this time setting here that's this period of darkness. So we can see why if we have this false time setting, we're going to have a message that's going to address this false time setting. And so we put here 2013. Now, um, so at the time of the end, we're going to have this October 5th uh, to December 21st, 2012. So this precedes it. So that's a period of 77 days. So we're saying that that is a um, the 77 days represents a type of fractal of the 777 days. Um, and this period of time here is going to be part of this prophetic mirror. That is, when we look at this line, um, what we don't see here, so these are putting these two lines together. And when we start on December 21st, 2012, and we go to December 25th, 2021, we have this period of time. How many days is this? So what is this number of days referencing? What is it parallel to? 2,391 days. You can maybe connect it to the year, the year of the flood. Okay, you're saying the year of the flood? Yeah, because actually the year of the flood is going to be the year 2391 B.C. on the 10th day of the seventh month, which is October 22, that the flood begins. That is when the door of the ark closes, right? Yes. Okay. Now, we also know that 
from October 13th, 2018 to, um, uh, to September 7th, uh, 2019 is 239 days which is I think 47 weeks or something like that. But that period of time, that two, two, three, nine, this is just 10 times that plus one. And, and it's related, so as we, we will see. So this period of time though is from December 21st, 2012 to December 25th, 2020. And in this structure, there's these uh, 777 days, there's going to be two periods of them. So, uh, so the first one here, this is from September 23rd, 2017. This is when I present July 18 as a symbol of the prediction before midnight. This is at Lambert Church. It's on the Sabbath. I end up with being invited to do the Sabbath sermon on that date. And that's a date in which the Protestants had predicted that the secret rapture or something was going to happen. It started a period of 1260 days. And this was based upon their reading of Revelation chapter 12. Um, that is the, the, uh, the Revelation 12 sign. That is the woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And so you can see the astronomical formation there that occurs only once that we know of in history occurs on that date. September 23rd, 2017, with all the different conditions that occur. But it's going to be the first day of the seventh month. It's going to have a, a, be a new moon. It's going to have, a, instead of nine stars above the head of Virgo, it's going to have 12. That's because three of the planets are there. Jupiter had entered the womb nine months before and then departed on that date. Um, so there's all these different things that happen. Uh, that mark this as the Revelation 12. That is, there's a sign in the heavens that John sees, and we can take that symbol of those things and see them literally portrayed on this date. And so I'm going to be presenting on that date, not knowing anything about that prophecy. And that's going to be um, uh, 252 days. Uh, before the um, uh, Italy camp meeting and in which Jeff at the end of that camp meeting is going to uh, close the Sabbath with a 9-11 prayer. And that's 518 days, if you count that, taking off those seven days to November 9th, 2019. So what we have is we have different dates in these lines, October 13th, 2018, you can see the 391.5 days to November 9th. And I just put the number of days that are here, 385.5. So 385 is the longest Hebrew year that you can get, um, you know, lunar solar year. And, and, and then we have these divisions, November 9th. Obviously, we're familiar with this, the 252 days to July 18th and the 520 days, 25 days to December 25th. So this is just showing that this period of time here, this 777 days, has events in it and dates in it um, that give you symbols. Um, some of them are more significant than others, right? But but that's what, what I did here with that. And And then we have from December 21st, 2012, we also have periods of 777 days. Now, these two groups are connected by 183 days. So from March 27th here on the far right to uh, September 23rd, 2017, so this is March 24th, 2017, um, is a period of 183 days. And so that year 2017 becomes really important. There's lots of things that happen in that year. Um, but that's the center of this chiasm is that period of 183 days. So this is rather involved. There's a lot of information in here. Um, uh, some of these dates are symbolic. Some of these dates are actual events at camp meetings. Some are, are anniversaries of different events. 
Um, and so they have these structures. And I'm not going to look at this in detail today, but um, that's what that's what we're going to have to to try to understand when we lay out this line. So this line is this what I call it's not just the seven 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 days, but it's the seven 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 chiasm is this whole period of time. So, so the fact that it lines up with the year that the flood commences, when the door of the ark is closed, you have this close of probation. That's going to be the, the first October 22, the first close of probation um, that is marked prophetically with the 120 years. Right? So the door of the ark closes, probation is closed, it's October 22. It's the 10th day of the seventh month, and it's in 2391 BC, right? So, so the fact that we have this in our line, this period of time with this 777 chiasm, I think is significant. I so, think, uh, yeah. We, we also have from the time of the flood 777 years. Yeah. So when Moses is born. When? Uh, Lamex? No, you, Moses. So, oh, you're saying from that date, there's 777 years to Moses' birth. Yes, but I'm having that date because the flood comes down to two years. You know, if you're just going to protect the years, is the, that the periods before the flood occurs is 1656 years. So that would take you to sort of saying the flood happens in 2390 BC. So one yeah. year after as well, maybe one. Yeah, so yeah, so the flood occurs from the Jewish year, fall to fall, if we wanted to do it that way. Um uh from in 391 is in the fall, and it's gonna end again in the fall of 390. Right. So yeah. most of the time that it occurs is in the year 390. And you're saying yeah. that if we take 390 plus 777, right? Well, no, you just minus, yeah, you minus 777 from um, 2390. Yeah, so two, yeah, 2390. And we should take you. Yeah, you subtract 777. Yeah. Yes. At 1613 BC. Yes. So that's when Moses was born. Okay. So Moses is born in 1613 because if you subtract uh, 80, you get 1533. And he's 80 yeah. years old when the Exodus occurs in 1533. Okay. And then, and then there's a. Uh... There's 120 years before the flood, and then 120 years is when Moses lives. Right. So the 100 then, years before the flood, you, we parallel with Moses is 120 years. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can have 480 years from the time that Moses, Noah, Noah was born, prior to that 120. And yeah. then you have the 400. Then you have the 480 years, First Kings chapter six, verse one, from the death of Moses. Right. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we're, you're going to present these things, um, these parallels, uh, when you do your presentations in July. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get, um, I think roughly you're going to have like a, a dozen presentations to do. Something right, like okay. that. Right. So the way that I'm going to set it up for the camp meeting is that you're going to do uh, a, a chronology presentation uh, in the morning and then in the afternoon. And I'm going to be presenting after your chronology presentation. So you'll see that the, you know, the idea is that you're presenting chronology and then I'm going to expound upon it in. So you're going to be presenting the chronology relating to what I'm going to be presenting. Right. That, okay. that seems fair. I mean, you can present other things too, but as long as you get that 
chronology so that people know the chronology or framework that we're working in. Um, so that, that is, we're going to have to coordinate our studies so that uh, I'm presenting what you're presenting. It's expected upon. So anyway, um, so these are important points, right? What what Stephen has brought out here, this 120 uh, years, so you're going to have, uh, uh, Noah's going to be 480 when the 120-year prophecy is given, right? Because he's 600 years old at the time of the flood. And then from the time that Moses dies, so he's going to live for 120 years, and he's going to be born 777 years after the flood. So you got a one, a 480, a 120, and then a 777. And then you're going to have a 120 and then a 480. Right? And that's going to bring you all the way to uh, the 480 years of 1 Kings, chapter 6, verse 1. So, so that, that's pretty pretty remarkable when you think about it, uh, that we have these structures that exist. Okay. So anyway, this, this whole line of Jotham and Abimelech is reminding us of that history. And we can see that all of this line is um, really relating to, in, in a lot of ways, to Jotham, right? I mean, it's... We, we have a Jotham's line and Abimelech's downfall. But Jotham's line is this information that's been given to this movement to counteract this Baal worship. Right? And, uh, and so it's quite important how things unfold. Um, I started writing a paper where I go through the history of, of how, how the different light was unfolded in regard to chronology to this movement. That is my own personal experience. And somebody from the outsider who comes in later can just say, well, there's all these different symbols and you've just created these things, you know, to fit. But because they unfolded in a very particular way, um, there's no way that I could have foreseen what was going to happen later. That is, we didn't wait until the events happened and then found these symbols. These symbols were revealed to us through the study of biblical prophecy. And then we passed through those symbols in our history. And, and then recognized them. So none of it was contrived or, you know, created just to, to make something fit. Everything just was given to us. And then we experienced Right. So and, and that's really what when we look at Abimelech's downfall, uh, if we look at this, uh, this Baal worship, which Abimelech is uh, supporting. Um, this is the destruction of that time setting message. That's what's happening from November 9th to December 25th, 2021. But we know that there's going to be Gideon's ephod, and Gideon's ephod is later going to be a stumbling block, right? And or a snare, I think, is what the Bible says. And that, that of course, exists in our movement presently. But here, this is addressing Samuel Snow, right? This is addressing our history of this movement. And so these lines really just bring us to. December 25th, 2021. This isn't going to bring us to April 5th, 2030 or anything like that. Right. So, so there are some differences about this line itself. It's, it's not going to bring us like to January 11th, 2023 or anything. It's, it's, it's in a sense, a shorter line. So there's nothing about this line that brings us to anything past December 25th. Now, there might be some things we notice as we go through this, but but that's how we have this line drawn out. Just moving these things around here. So, you know, we have them both put together here, but we're going to deal with them separately. 
So that's what we're going to try to do this week. We're going to try to see how far we can get in this. But there's a lot of detail here, right? That's part of the problem with these studies is we have so much detail of things that God has shown us and so much history um, that, you know, it's, it's not easy to remember all of it. But we should be able to put it on a line and see its significance. So, and, and in this line here, we're going to say October 5th to December 21st, 2012, is, is the time of the end, marking the beginning of 2013, right? So we're putting 2013. Technically, we could say, well, this is 2012. But, you know, it depends how you're counting that year, right? So if you're counting this year as uh, starting with the winter solstice, uh, then you're going to see that that's 2013 in that context. But it's part of that bigger line. So so hopefully that review kind of helps, or a preview review. It's a review of what we study, but a preview of what we're going to study. And I, I need previews. <laughs> yeah. Like everybody needs previews. Yeah. So, so that's where we're going to be traveling, you know, probably it, it'll probably take us two weeks to get through this i would think but that's what we want to have laid out we want to have these verses we want to have it clearly marked so that we can understand so that we could present this if we had to or at least you know we should be able to look at these lines and remember what these things are um, that are being marked so any final thoughts before we close with prayer Okay, let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this study and for the people that have participated and that are watching these studies, that are studying on their own, uh, see, searching to seek whether these things are so. We know, Lord, that some of these things are very remarkable, almost unbelievable in their exactness. And yet we know, Lord, that this is not to... Uh, titillate our imagination and our human nature. This is not meant to be excitement, but Lord, this is meant to be uh, a message from you that reveals your, your ability to control the destiny of this world and also to be concerned about our individual lives and the things that we experience. We know, Lord, that... Um, these things are brought to us to bring a conviction that we are indeed sinners and we need your grace and mercy and that we need to be able to cling to you every moment of every day. And so we just ask, Lord, that you can watch over us, that you can still speak to our hearts in spite of their hardness and that we can open our hearts to you and allow you to do the work that you seek to do in our lives. Forgive us for our sins, we pray and ask. In Jesus' name, amen.